this LAYS project. It is a support action by the Commission. So it um, has a very small group of uh, uh, partners, but it has a very large uh, field of interest uh, and, and support from the community. And if you are interested, please go to the uh, website and sign up to become an associated partner because it's, it's possible to do that and you get a little bit more information when you do that. Uh, that's a way to, 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 to build this community. And we are cooperating with the, the projects uh, that are uh, working on learning analytics and more are to be funded by the European Union. So what we have been doing in this project is to try to explore what's happening in three spaces, in higher education, in schools, and also in workplace learning. There we uh, are looking into one specific sector, the manufacturing sector, but uh, uh, workplace learning is a, is a very interesting scenario as well. So what is uh, being done is that we try to build bridges between the uh, research uh, communities and the practice communities. Uh, and the way we do that is, among others, to create or, uh, an, what we call an evidence hub. It's, uh, it's a place where we try to, in a systematic way, try to find evidence for learning analytics, the effects of learning analytics, and try to, to, uh, to uh, register that and, and, uh, and to uh, also display some of the evidence in, 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 a, in a fashion that shows where it originates. But what is interesting is that there is not that much evidence of the effects of learning analytics. It's still a very, very uh, developing field, you might say. So uh, it's a good idea to go to, to uh, this uh, URL and, and to see what is being added now. It's not that much there now, but it's uh, towards uh, the end of the project. We have still one more year it will be uh, a lot of uh, reports and, and, and stuff referenced there where you can find some, some hard evidence for, for that learning analytics works. So what we do is to capture, write, share and, 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 and make sense of what is happening in the field. We are uh, publishing a lot of uh, reviews, reports that are more kind of lightweight reports than academic reports, trying to summarize the, the, the state of arts in, in, in this field. So that's LACE. So today's theme is about data security issues. It, just a comment on, on, on this title. It, to be frank, it gets it's all wrong. It's not about data security. Because that's the easy bit. That's the, the, the bit that researchers worry about. But learning analytics is not about research only. It's about scaling up learning analytics for the schools and for the universities. And then data security is not a very important issue. It is important, but not very important when you look at the other issues. So what is the context here? What are the issues and what are the research questions coming out of this? Well, let me just show a video because that's... I think learning analytics is really the silent storm that's going to make a bigger difference in our educational system and experience in the long run. That was a short one, huh? Uh, the, the longer version is on our website. But the silent storm. And it seems to be that storm is, is a kind of concept that's used a lot when you discuss big data. So have a, let's have a look at, at other that are used this storm. These two uh, technology journalists have uh, written uh, a, a book on the age of the context. And they have uh, listed five storms that's going to change not only education, but the world we live in. Let's have a look at that. First, it is the census. How many 
know how many senses they are going around with. I mean, I have this one, so I, I can look at how I slept last night. It wasn't very good, but that's one, one sensor. That one has a number of sensors, knows how many stairs I climb, whatever I do. That's an, an iPhone. And you have sensor built in in things you don't really know. So there are lots of data that's being captured. These data are worn on your, on your body, in your clothes, in your purse, wherever you, 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 you move around, they, they capture data. They know where you are. Location is very important. And you have services that are, 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 are based on, on location. They, the data you gather is shared. And, it, and, and you, you share them willing you yourself. That's, that's quite interesting. Even if you, you are very skeptical to, for, about your privacy, you share your data. And of course, there is the data. So these five storms will change society. And it's very naive to think that it won't change education when it's going to have a huge impact on the society at large. So what about, I mean, we can be skeptical about it, but it's going to have some impact. Let's look at the impact or what's, what's happening in, in, in education. In LOC, that was a conference, the fifth conference in, in the learning analytics and knowledge community. In uh, a couple of months ago, there was a keynote on natural language processing by uh, uh, Danielle McCarty of Arizona State University. I mean, what she showed, I mean, this is, I, I haven't a clue about natural processing, uh, language processing, but I can understand what's being done broadly. It's on that slide. I can see there are lots of tools available now. And what, what was said was that they could predict very much ab about the student's behavior, results, what will happen with the students by analyzing the text, the text that the student produces. And that's what interests me, the text what kind of text? It's not only the text that is in, in a bulletin board or in, in, in an essay. It's all kind of text. Whatever you utter could be used by this technology to decide upon what is happening to you as a learner. So, so even if you say it's, it's only this, this bulk of text that's relevant for learning, you, you have the community and yourself as teachers and researchers will press for having more and more of that text included in the analysis. And this is going to happen, and that is going to, to I mean, there is going to be huge pressure on using this when you see that it's, it's, it's really working, it's helpful. So there is technologies out there that also in the, the learning field that, that demands a huge amount of data and use the, 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 the sensors and all the kind of technologies that is making a change at, for society at large. So there is going to be a race to the top by university, by schools, not only private schools, but also in other Scandinavian or Nordic countries. I mean, when, 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 when parents are getting ambitious, they put certain pressures on, on teachers and others and, and demand that these kind of technologies will come. So in order to reach the top, there is going to be a pressure on releasing data, access to data. And there's going to also to be a pressure or, or a concern about how the data subjects, the learners, how they see their interest in releasing these data. So these are the two issues that are, are, are really critical. But 
I mean, who could you really trust? I mean, you should trust the, the, the educational society, but what happens in the UK? The, the, the institution that kind of uh, recruit or, or, or make people go into universities are selling their data to, to Vodafone and to, to Microsoft or whatever. I mean, that, what, what, what kind of, what world are we living in? Well, if you see at Coursera, if you see at uh, FutureLearn these MOOCs, you will see that they tell you directly that they will sell your data to the third party. So the issue of who owns the data, how do you get access to the data is, is critical. So how do we understand this? I mean, in, in the European Union, there is, there is uh, just last year, uh, in October, November, was issued a report on, on with, with a limited number, 20 recommendations for improvement or, or, or modernization of the uh, European university system. And it says that member states should ensure that we have legal frameworks that enable learning analytics. And of course you have full and informed consent of students must be a requirement. And it should also only be used for, for educational purposes. That's the recommendation. And we know from what I've said, we know that this is pretty impossible to achieve. It, this, is, this is blue sky thinking. And there is also another recommendation that privacy and data prote protection policies should be clear and understandable. And you know that it's not going to happen, at least as far as we see it now. So, data sharing is the issue here, and it's not only about research. It's about research, but it's also about the need to combine a varied set of data sets or data in order to achieve something sensible. I mean, if you only have one set of data, one coming out of one tool, one experiment, it's not going to be learning analytics because you, you're not able to say much. But the, the, your, your ability to predict is, is increasing by each kind new data set you add to, 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 the, to the source, so to speak. So we need to have sufficient scale to, to, uh, to be able to do learning analytics. And we also need to have data in order to do uh, uh, research in a traditional way. I mean, to, 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 to kind of make sure that, that the, the, the uh, results stick and you can reproduce and, and all of those kind of stuff. So data sharing is, is essential for, for, for development. Then it's interesting to look at what, how does data sharing apply to the different aspects of, of learning and education? I mean, this is just one way to, 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 uh, to make a, a, a four-field table on, on, you have intentional, uh, informal, you have formal, informal, and it's clear that learning analytics can help in each of these. I mean, <coughs> when it comes to formal, education in schools. I mean, learning analytics could, could help you organize your, 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 your class so that you can put together groups in a better way, all that kind of stuff. Uh, in, in more one-to-one -one, uh, relationships, learning analytics could be used to, to really to, to see where are the uh, knowledge gaps and, and how do you address them. The more unexpected I mean, then learning analytics could be used to, to kind of give you relevant resources and, and so forth. The question I'm asking is how do you get the data from these different learning spaces or fields or, 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 or education? It's, it's easy to get uh, data from uh, LMS, <laughs> but it's not very relevant when all the learning happens in Facebook. In, in that particular class, where they only get 
the, the assignments and they do all the learning work somewhere else outside of the reach of, 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 of the formal education. So from that we see there are lots of uh, ethical, legal, logistical issues that need to be discussed. And uh, during this LACE uh, community work we have put together a number of workshops trying to tease out the, the community, the experts' uh, opinions on, on, on data sharing. And uh, a guy from, from the UK, uh, Neil Slater, on, on behalf of JISC, has put up a, a taxonomy on, on, on these questions. And you find the reference in, in the slides, and you find also all, these, um, all the questions uh, there. But they are uh, grouped in, in, in classes like ownership and control, consent, that's a much easier, transparency, privacy, validity, what, what, what is really concerns about what is really shown, what, what, what is the dashboards of learning analytics, are they relevant for learning or are they just showing what kind of data that's available for analysis and for, for, for making dashboards. So these issues are starting to be mapped. The summary of our workshops says that there is a significant boundaries to combine different data sets. It's, it's hard, it's difficult to, to, to get data sets and combine them. There is a trade-off between the benefits of learning analytics and privacy protection. I mean, that's obvious. There is a concern about the effectiveness and the limitation to privacy protection. I mean, it's easy to, to, to interpret the law and to say, okay, this is, but do as the Norwegian does now, the agency, they publish uh, what the, their uh, legal advisor says, and, and in one sentence it says, if you don't comply with these claims, what you're doing is illegal. Well, perhaps learning analytics in itself is illegal according to those, if you have a strict interpretation of that. So the, the answer to this is transparency and accountability and control, but what does it mean? And the idea that you, you have a kind of binary in opt-in, opt-out model, I, I mean, I, I choose myself if I'm going to give my data is not really happening. It's, 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 it, it, it's, it's not realistic. So I'm going to, to go very quickly through some, some, some kind of perspectives that could uh, contribute to the answers of some of these questions. First of all, the understanding of privacy. Privacy is a very delicate thing. If you look at this, that picture, you find that this is kind of weird, but it is a good situation because it was necessary to make that examination and it is ethically very correct. What it tells is that privacy is all about the context. It's not about limitations and, and, and control necessarily. It's about the context. It's about the appropriateness of the context and it, it's about the distribution of the data. So what is, what is appropriate? What is collected? Is it what collected? Is it appropriate? Is it okay? Does it feel okay? Is it revealed? Is it valid in the, in the current context? It might be invalid in another context. Distribution, who sees the data? When? For what purpose? These questions are extremely important when it comes to privacy, but that gives a completely different take on privacy than thinking control and limitation to access. So uh, the, the context integrity theory of privacy is one that's, that's really interesting. The other aspects that we see happen is trying to come up with codes of practice. If you go to the United Kingdom, to the Open University there, you will find that 
they have done an excellent work in uh, formulating a policy on ethical use of student data for learning analytics. And they also have uh, developed guidance material for students and, and so forth. And if you look at this, it's, 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 it's a first take, but it's, it's very uh, interesting and should be an inspiration for other uh, universities as well. But it does say, for instance, that education is an ethical practice. We used to think about education as a pedagogical practice, but it's an ethical practice. What does that mean? What does ethics in that context mean? Another kind of take on this is uh, the privacy by design principles. It's built into the European data protection um, uh, regulations already. It's, 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 it's there. But what does it mean? If you take it seriously, it means that you have to think about privacy from the very beginning when you start to design a tool, an application. And how many researchers do that when they, when they, they think about a nice uh, application for learning analytics? Very often, they just go for the, the interest and don't think about how, how should this scale up? Because if privacy by design is built into the, 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 uh, the design of the, 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 the very uh, research uh, project, maybe that research project would be very different. And that is, that is really uh, an issue. I mean, we are not doing research on learning analytics just for, 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 for for, for publications and, and, and academic careers. We are doing research in order to scale up and to, to roll it out. And that's, that needs to be taken into consideration from the very beginning. So what I'm, I'm, I'm closing with some reflection, or some questions rather, on, on architectures for learning. Because that's, that's what has been in, uh, interesting me. You have different kind of, 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 of uh, architectures for learning analytics but very often you see that privacy ethical considerations are not built into these design architectures and then you have this kind of catastrophic blunders that that uh, happened in in uh, in the United States uh, a year ago or a little bit more than a year ago the so-called in bloom affair where they had to close down a multi-million enterprise because they haven't considered privacy. So what, oops, how do you build into your technical design these considerations about usage agreements, authorization, and so forth? That's really a research question. And it's also, uh, Oops, a research question. Which pedagogical scenarios are possible in the short run or uh, in the longer run, for that matter, when, when it comes to learning analytics? Maybe we, we, we need to, to start with small tools, small data, small designs, and, and build from there while we are including the, the privacy and ethical aspects into our technical design and, and organizational design. So to, to, to conclude, you have to uh, watch this space, the LACE uh, project. There you will find a, that's a hub for, 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 uh, for uh, connecting to the community and also to, to, uh, to uh, take part in that community. Last but not least, not everything that can be counted counts. Not everything that counts can be counted. That's where we stand, and uh, that's where we should spend some time thinking. Thank you. <laughs>